In this video, we're going to discuss how to set up WAMP on Windows 10. Now, a little sidebar. I've been teaching at the University of Cincinnati since the 2000-2001 school year, and I've seen a lot of different methodologies over that time. One of the newer things has been online classes, and a lot of times people who went through a traditional program ask me, are online classes really effective? I do miss having the ability to judge a student's reaction immediately as I say things and then adjust my lecture uh, to fit the reaction I'm getting from the students and the feedback I'm getting from the students. And so I try to make up for that by doing questions for me on each of the quizzes where the students can come in and ask me questions. On the other hand, I do find it's a more effective use of time because many times I'm in lecture, something goes wrong, I have to spend a long time recovering for it with an audience of students watching me, and I'm not making good use of their time. With online courses, I have the ability to go back and edit out things that were not productive. This is one of those times. When I initially recorded this video, I downloaded WAMP and tried to install it, and I ended up running into some issues where there were some DLLs that were missing from my Windows 10 installation, and WAMP did not install correctly. So I installed those missing dependencies, and I found that WAMP was only partially installed. So I uninstalled WAMP, reinstalled WAMP, everything worked fine. The first five minutes of this original video was me installing WAMP and it not working properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this piece that you're watching right now at the beginning of the video and I'm either going to cut out or way fast forward that four minutes where I tried unsuccessfully to install WAMP and instead we're going to pick up with a more recommended approach so you don't have to waste that time of installing WAMP and finding out that it doesn't work for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you an approach that you can use to get it right the first time. So a couple of things. What is WAMP? It stands for Windows Apache MySQL and PHP. It's a good stack of open source components that run on Windows, where Windows itself is not open source. Uh, but it allows you to run and administer a traditional SQL based database. So a good way you can store things, uh, any kind of data that you want from Java, from PHP, from Perl. As a matter of fact, the uh, MySQL and PHP MyAdmin is the same stack that I use behind the scenes on the Live Plant Places website. So very functional. It's a good tool to know. It's one of those things where it's kind of a common language among developers. So I attempted to install it and it fell over because it was missing some prerequisites. So what I recommend, instead of installing it without the prerequisites, go ahead and install those C++ prerequisites. I'll walk through those in the very next slide. After that, download WAMP, then install WAMP, and then start WAMP. So what are the prerequisites that you need? Well, these are the ones I found were missing on my first installation. MS VCP 120 DLL, which is part of the Visual C++ 2013 redistributable package. MS VCR 110 DLL, uh, which is part of Visual C++ 2012. And VC Runtime 140 DLL, which is part of Visual C++ 2015. You can download these from Microsoft. And as a matter of fact, you notice I haven't put a link in this presentation. If you just search for these files, you'll find the link to download them pretty quickly. As a matter of fact, when you start typing these names into your favorite search engine, it will typically auto-complete with msvcp120.dll is missing. Then just click on that link, uh, that will take you through. And in the video, I will maintain that piece where I am clicking on the link and doing the download so that you can see it happen. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the installation. And as I mentioned, I'm going to cut out or significant, significantly fast forward parts of it. Let's go ahead and get started. In this video, we're going to see how to install WAMP server on our virtual machine. WAMP stands for Windows, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, which is a really nice way to get up a quick and easy database where you can start storing some information. There's also a LAMP equivalent, which is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. So there are several different variations of this, but it's fairly easy to install. Just follow the directions and we will download it. So let's go ahead and download the WAMP server uh, 32, uh, let's go for the 64-bit. I'm going to click here on the download directly link. The messaging here is a little bit confusing. I'm just going to go ahead and click download latest version and we'll let it, we'll let it download. Okay, 
and I will go ahead and pause the video as this is downloading, as it will take just a few moments. The download has finished. I see it down here in my menu bar, so I'm going to head, go ahead and choose Open. Now, what I'm going to do is it looks like we're missing some Visual C++ redistributable components. So I'm just going to search on that error message that I just got. And it's looking for a file called msvcp120.dll. And you see that the auto suggest here is kind of interesting because it appears that several other people are having a very similar issue. So go ahead and click. And down here, uh, just first link that, link that comes up gives a little uh, kind of synopsis of the issue. And then it gives us a download link. Probably the best one here is the 64-bit edition since we are installing 64-bit WAM. So I go ahead and choose that and choose next. We'll give this just a moment. And now it's downloading. And so we'll go ahead and choose open. And we'll walk through this installation process as well. Of course, as always, we're going to read the uh, license agreement in great depth and then choose install. After a little bit of thinking, it says Setup Successful. So we'll go ahead and choose Close. Now there is another file it was looking for as well, msvcr110dll. So once again, do similar results, just search for that file. Uh, go ahead and navigate to the download link here, and let's download. And similar decision before, I'm going to stay consistent and stay with the 62-bit version. Choose Next and walk through that exact same sequence that we did earlier. Uh, agree to the license only, of course, after you've had a chance to read it in great depth and choose install. Set up successful and close. Now, let's see if I type WAMP, do I have WAMP? So we have WAMP Server 64, I click. And VC Runtime 140 DLL. So it looks like we have a little bit more that we need to do. Uh, either that or we can try to reinstall WAMP. So what I'm going to do, VC Runtime 140 DLL, I'm going to search for that one. Once again, the autocomplete there is, is very telling. It looks like a lot of people are having a similar issue here. So one more thing to read, and guess what we get to do again? Download, and choose the 64-bit version. Choose Next. Looks like this is a bit of a larger file, but only 15 megabyte, not terribly large. Choose Open one more time, and we get to read the entire license agreement in great depth. And then I agree, and install. Let's let this one go. Now, I, I never could get more than one service to start. So what I did is I went ahead, paused the video, uninstalled WAMP using add remove programs, and now I'm reinstalling it. So what I'm going to do, and you probably already know this because when you're watching the video, we'll, you will have already seen this, but what I'm going to do is recommend that you just fast forward a bit through the video until the point where I install those uh, C++ redistributables and then install WAMP. Might be a good approach, or you can do it as I do it. Try to install it, see if you have everything you need. If not, on it, add the things that you need and then reinstall it. So let's go ahead and say, yeah, we're going to allow access to Apache and I'll go ahead and choose next. I feel much better now because you see this installation got a lot further than the last one. So I'm going to go ahead and choose finish. Not a sure thing and I'll never know until I actually try and start it, but at least I got through the installation without an error message. So I'm going to go ahead, double click on the WAMP icon again. We'll let the little box come up. We see the icon starts as red, and now it goes to amber, and now it goes to green. Wow, I feel much better now because everything just automatically started. So let's do a quick check of a couple of items. Uh, first of all, let's go to localhost, and yep, I was never able to bring this page up before in the first installation. And now let's go to PHP my admin. If this comes up, this will be a real victory. And yes, there's PHP, my admin. I uh, feel much better about that. So it looks like we're up and ready to run. Now I'm going to go by memory here. Uh, as I recall, the default username is root with no password, or it may be root root. Let's see if my uh, memory, oh, yep, there we go. My memory is still the same. So uh, at this point, we have WAMP up and loaded, which means we have a, a little Apache server. 
and we have MySQL, and we have PHP MyAdmin, which we can use to administer MySQL. This is great news because at this point, uh, we know that we can create a database, and now we can move forward. We can connect to the database. We can do a lot of things. So in summary, few files we're going to need, uh, and then we can install WAMP. Once we have WAMP installed, it's fairly easy to get set up. So I hope this video has been helpful. In future videos, we're going to see how we can persist Java objects to our MySQL instance using Spring Boot and JPA. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.